my strawberry ripple meringue terrace. If you want to see how to make them, then stay tuned. Hi everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel Little Miss Bake. I'm Aoife and I'm going to be showing you how you can make my strawberry ripple meringue recipe. Now I'm new to YouTube so I'd love to hear what you think of my videos and content so far. Please subscribe, like and comment and let me know what you think. Okay everybody so let's get started on the recipe. Now for this recipe you're going to need two eggs, about 250 ml of whipping cream, half a pound of strawberries, and two ounces of caster sugar. Now a really easy tip for remembering when you're making meringue is that for every one egg you're going to add two ounces of caster sugar. So I have two eggs here so I'm going to be adding four ounces of caster sugar. Now I know ounces is kind of an old measurement so if you want to see the translation to that make sure to look in my description below and I have everything there for you. So let's get started. So for the eggs what we're going to do is we only need the egg white. So I'm going to crack the egg white, now making sure not to get any yolk or shell into the egg white. Now this takes a bit of practice, so if you're not used to this, don't worry if you mess it up the first time. Um, and the second egg goes straight in the same way. Perfect. Now this is going to go on our mixer at a low speed until we form soft peaks and then we're going to gradually add our caster sugar. Okay, so I've just stopped my mixer and I'm happy to th with the consistency that I see at the moment with the meringue. Now it's kind of holding its shape and it's, it's coming together slightly and it's at this stage that we want to add the caster sugar. Now with the meringue it's not really a science, you know, if it goes a little bit over a soft peak it's okay but you, you really just don't want it under the soft peak you don't want it any kind of liquid you want it to hold a firm shape before you start adding your sugar now i'm going to add the caster sugar a tablespoon at a time while the mixer is running okay so i'm slowly going to add my sugar down the side of the mixer just a little at a time and i'm actually going to increase the speed as i'm doing this until we get a nice firm peak and you should be able to hold the ball over your head and that's when you know your meringues are done Okay, so I've just stopped the mixer because I think my meringue is just about ready. It's looking quite stiff and it's holding its shape and I'm going to try the ultimate test now which is holding the bowl over your head. If you're a little bit unsure about this, maybe don't do this part. Uh, but these are looking okay, so let's just... <laughs> yeah, I think we've done it. So these are ready now to go onto our baking tray and I'm going to show you exactly how to make a beautiful meringue terror. Now you want to have your oven preheating to 140 to 150 degrees Celsius at the moment, ready for your meringues to go in. Okay, so you're probably wondering where our strawberry ripple effect is coming from. And I'm going to use regular old food colouring and some toothpicks. So I have here some red food colouring and I'm using red because it goes really well with my strawberries and I think it's just going to tie everything in together. So you can use whatever food colouring you want. Maybe you want to do one for a baby shower, you can use pink and blue or a boy and girl birthday party or maybe a Christmas meringue and you can use some green and red. Really it's up to you whatever you want to use. So for this meringue, it's going to have three easy components to it. Now all of them are going to have the strawberry ripple effect using our food colouring to it. But the first step is going to be a large base. So we're going to have three uh, large dollops of meringue that I have just lined a tray here with parchment paper and I put a little bit of meringue under each side just to stick it to the tray very easily. So we're going to have three large bases. Then we're going to have three discs in the middle of the cream and strawberries and they are going to be around the same circumference as our base and then lastly we're going to have a teardrop shaped meringue on top it's all going to make sense when i show you just how to do it before this you're going to need two piping bags with two nozzles now i have a star tip and a round nozzle it doesn't matter you can use whatever you have at home uh, so let's get started okay so as you can see i have three lovely more meringue mounds here on my tray. Now you don't want to be too precise when you're evening these out because the cream and strawberries is going to go on top and as you can see I've already started to ripple through one of them. Now you're going to do this with a toothpick and some food colouring. Now what you want to do is you just want to place your toothpick inside the food colouring, pick up a bit of colour and then simply just ripple it through your meringue. You kind of want to wipe off the toothpick every time you do this because there can be some excess left on the stick and you just want to rip it through like that. Now this is a really fun part and you can go a bit crazy with this. You don't need to be too precise. And look at that lovely rippling effect that we're getting. 
So you want to continue this and get an overall rhythm effect on each of the meringues and then we're going to start on our disc shape for the middle of our tower. So I filled my two piping bags, one here with um, a little bit extra than this one because this one is actually just for the teardrop shape. So this is for our disc shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to pipe our disc shape to the same sort of circumference as our base is here. Now, I just think it's easier to use a piping bag for this one because we just kind of want to flat the surface area because our tower is going to be tall enough as it is and we don't want it too tall. So these discs don't have to be too tall themselves. And finally what we're going to do is we're going to pipe our little teardrop shape. Now I'm just going to pipe three of these for the top of each but you can pipe a little bit extra to have some left over. And these are going to be rippled in a different way than the rest of them. Now these have a lovely little shape to them already because I'm using a star tip nozzle. And why they're going to be rippled a little bit differently is I'm going to try ripple them up the meringue teardrop instead of just kind of swirling it around. So I'm taking a bit of food colour in here. And what you want to do is you want to stripe it up like so. So you get a nice kind of candied effect on each of the teardrop shape. Okay, so we're finally finished with our meringues and they're looking beautiful on the tray here. And I can't wait to add our strawberries and cream to them. Now they're going to go into a preheated oven at 140 to 150 degrees Celsius. And they're going to cook for about 20 to 30 minutes. Now because they have different size meringues here, the smaller ones might cook a bit quicker. So if you can be really quick, what you want to do is when you see these browning a little bit, you want to just peel them quickly off the tray and let the rest of them cook for that further maybe five to ten minutes or whatever it might be. Now when they're finished their cooking, uh, you'll notice that they're nice and crispy and they might have a tiny bit of a golden shade to them. If they don't, it doesn't matter, they're probably still cooked. And what you want to do is you want to turn off the oven and leave them in the oven with the oven door open slightly for about half an hour and then you want to take them out, put them onto a cooling rack and let them cool completely before we add our strawberries and cream. So while our meringues are baking in the oven, what you want to do is you want to start whipping up your cream. You want to whip it to a nice stiff peak. And then what you want to do is wash your strawberries, cut the little uh, green tops off and chop them up, ready to go on our meringues. Okay, so our meringues have come out of the oven and they have been in for 30 minutes cooking. Now I did say before that you might have to take the smaller meringues out about five to 10 minutes before the others, but mine have actually lasted the full length 30 minutes and they're looking great. They are a little bit golden brown on top, they're nice and crunchy and they're a little bit marshmallowy on the inside, which is what I'm looking for. So now I'm going to show you how to assemble our strawberry ripple meringue tower. So you want to take a spatula to scrape the meringue off the parchment paper because they can be a little bit sticky because they're so marshmallowy and gooey on the inside. So I'm just placing it here on my cake stand so you can see what I'm doing. So to this I'm going to add my whipped cream. Now I've just whipped this up to a nice stiff peak so that it holds its shape. I'm just going to gently press the cream down onto our base. And next step is the strawberries. So what you want to do is you want to take a little handful of strawberries and kind of place them towards the edge of the meringue so that when you are displaying these that you can really see that there's strawberries on the inside. Just like that. And we're going to add another layer of strawberries and cream so you don't have to go too heavy on the strawberries and cream here. So the next step is our disc for the centre. So I'm just peeling this disc off here. Look how pretty that is. I mean, who wouldn't want to eat this and we serve this for dessert? So now we're going to add another small bit of cream, not as much as the last time, just a smaller dollop. And you want to be gentle when you're doing this so as not to crack the meringue itself. And a little bit more, I think, on top. Yeah, there we go. That looks beautiful. And some more strawberries. And these are really white, fresh strawberries, so this is going to be so tasty. A small dollop of cream on top of them, and we're going to add our really cute candied stripe teardrop shape around dollop. And there we have it, our beautiful strawberry ripple meringue tower. So we're finished, and how good did these strawberry ripple meringue towers look? Who would 
want to be served one of these after a dinner party or as a midweek bacon treat. So I've had so much fun making these today and I hope you do too if you tried the recipe. If you liked watching me making my strawberry ripple meringue terrace then please subscribe, like and comment on my channel Little Miss Bake and don't forget to check me out on Instagram at littlemissbake underscore.